Hey everyone, my name is Abhishek and today we are going to create this class dispersion text animation in Blender. You can use this material on any object and it is very easy to create. Not only this, I will also share a trick using which you can render out your images in low resolution and after that you can upscale them to 4K or even 8K in just couple of seconds. So make sure to watch the full tutorial. So let's begin. Alright, so right now I'm in Blender and I'm using this 3.2 version but this technique should work with all the versions. So first we are going to select all of them and let me just quickly press S and I'm going to delete everything. Now before I begin, at this corner you will be able to see all the keys that I'm pressing, all the shortcuts that I'm using in this, in case I don't mention anyone. So now let's begin. First I'm going to create my text, so for that let's press Shift A and let's create a text. Now I'm going to go under the text option from here and first I'm going to change the alignment to center. Now I'm going to press R, X and I'm going to rotate it by 90 degree, something like this. Now let me just quickly zoom in and let's select our text. Let's press tab to go into the edit mode and I'm going to type my text. So it's completely up to you. You can type whatever you want. I'm going to type void. After that, let's press tab again to go out of the edit mode. Now we can change couple of the parameters. So first let's select the font and let me just quickly go under the fonts and you can pick whatever font you want. But for this example, I'm going to use this Montserrat black font. Again, it's completely up to you. You can pick whatever font you want. Now let's add some extrusion. So let's go under the geometry and we are going to extrude it. So let's set this to something like 0.3. So yeah, this is looking nice. After that, we can add a little bit of bevel. So let's go under the bevel and I'm going to increase the depth a little bit and let's decrease the resolution to something like 3 or 2 maybe so yeah, I think this is looking fine so once you're happy with your text let me just quickly add some animation to this so we are going to add a simple rotation animation so in order to do that let me just quickly open up my timeline and you can press I for rotation and let's add a keyframe after that, let's move the cursor to somewhere around 60 frames. And now you can press N on the keyboard to get the transform options. And now we are going to animate it along the X axis. And you will notice that it is not rotating from the center. In order to fix that, what we can do is we can select our text and let's go under the text options. And from here, you can see that we have the alignment. So let's align it to the center. So now if I rotate it, you can see that it is rotating from the center. So we are going to just add a 360 degree rotation over here. So it's 90. So I'm going to just add 360 to this. So plus 360. So we have the 450. Now you can right click and just click on insert keyframes. So now if I play back here, you can see we have this animation. Now let's tweak this animation and make this more satisfying. So we can go under the graph editor. Now let's select the normalize. After that, we can select the keyframes and let's zoom in. You can zoom in using this. After that, let's navigate this and we are going to select this point. Let's press S and I'm going to scale this little bit, something like this. Now we can select this point. Let's press S and I'm going to scale this just like that. So now if I play back here, you can see we have this very smooth animation, which is exactly what we want. Once you're happy with the animation, we are ready to add our material. So let me just quickly change this to shader editor. And now let's move this to the top. So first I'm going to change my render. So let's go under the rendering engine. We are going to change this to cycles and let's change the device from CPU to GPU compute. So this technique won't work in EV. So make sure to change the rendering engine to cycles. After that, we can select our text and let's click on new. So let's call this class. Now we can zoom in and you can see that we have the principal BSDF and the output node. Let me just quickly switch to the look dev mode, something like this. Now we can select the principal BSDF and I'm going to press X to delete it because we don't need this. And instead we are going to add a glass BSDF. So you can press shift A then search for glass and just click on glass PSDF. Now we have to create three copies of it. So you can just click on this. After that, press shift D and it will create a new copy. Just click over here. Now again, press shift D 
and let's create another copy and let's place it over here. So we're going to use three instances of gloss PSDF because we are going to add some dispersion and we will have individual channels like red, green and blue. So now we are going to add these two. So for that we are going to again add a shader which is the add shader. Now I'm going to plug the BSDF into the top and this one to the bottom. Now we are going to create another add shader node. So just search for add shader. Let's place it over here and we are going to plug this PSDF to the bottom and this one to the top. After that we can plug this to the surface. So now you can see that we have this glossy kind of look. So first we are going to change the color. So let's click on the color. Make sure you are in the RGB and we are going to set all the channels except the red one to zero. And let's go to this one. And in this one, we are going to set red to zero and green to one and blue to zero as well. And if you go under here, we are going to set red to zero, green to zero and blue to one. So now you can see we have three nodes and all these are representing the three channels and I'm going to change the viewport shading. So this is the final rendering output and you will notice that we are getting this sort of result. Now in order to view it more clearly, I'm going to change my object to the world tab so that we can add a HDRI or you can also add a noise texture. So let's search for noise and I'm going to just plug the color to this. And again, let's press shift A and I'm going to add color ramp. Let's place it over here. And we can increase the scale. Let's crunch these closer. Something like this. Now this is temporary because we are going to change this later on. So this is just to get the view what we are doing. After that, let's switch back to the object mode. And you can see that we have this sort of text and in order to have the dispersion in the refraction, we have to change this IOR value or index of refraction. So let's change this to 1.4 and I'm going to set the green one to 1.45 and the blue one we are going to set this to 1.5. So now you can see that we are able to see little bit of bending or colors in the refraction which is exactly what we want and let's tweak this further so that it looks very nice. Let me just quickly add another node. So we are going to press shift A and this time we are going to add mix shader and let's place it over here and let's plug this to the top and after that we are going to add another node. So let's search for gloss PSTF and let's plug this PSTF to the bottom one. Now you can see that we have this milky kind of glass and we can fix that by simply adding a node called Fresnel. Let's click over here and we are going to plug the factor into this factor. And now we can change the roughness of this glossy PSTF to something like 0.1 just like that. So we are done with our material and our next step is to set up the scene with lights and everything. So let me just quickly go back to the world tab and we don't need any of these. So I'm going to just select them, press X to delete them. We only need our text and couple of lights. So let me just quickly zoom in. Let's press N to get rid of this area. Now we can press shift A and under the lights, we can add the area light. And let me just quickly press S to scale this up press G Z and right away you can see that we are able to see the dispersion colors over here. Now let's go under the light settings and we are going to increase the power. So I'm going to set this to something like 400 so that it is quite bright. And after that, it's completely up to you. You can just play around with the position of the light. You can place it wherever you want and just have an interesting look which looks nice in the viewport. And before we tweak this further, let me just quickly add my camera. So let's press shift A and let's select the camera just press ctrl alt and numpad 0 so that camera will fit to your view now we can change the camera under the camera settings and first i'm going to change the type from perspective to orthographic and after that we can increase its scale so that our text is completely inside this and let me just quickly press n and let's go under the view and i'm going to lock the camera to view so that we can move our camera 
with our cursor something like this so once you are happy with uh, angle just simply press n again and we are ready to add our lights so let me just quickly go back to the viewport shading now let's add another light so i'm going to select this press shift d to duplicate this and let me just quickly place it over here and i'm going to press r to rotate it something like this let's go back to the camera view and let's change our rendering mode and now you can see that we have light over here just play around with its position and you will find a really nice angle let me just quickly place this at the bottom so now you can see that we are able to get our dispersion and our text visible as well let me just quickly add another light so shift a light and let's add uh, area light r x 90 degree and let me just quickly scale this up and let's press g y and i'm going to move this to the front and let's move this little bit down now i'm going to rotate this let's press s and let's increase little bit of strength and after that you can play around with its position something like this so now you can see that we have this really nice text and if you think that this is too bright then you can play around with its position and the intensity let me just quickly lower this down so now you can see this bottom edges also highlight using our bottom light just like that so we are done with our scene and our last step is to render this out but before that there are a couple of settings that you have to do in order to get the best possible output so now let's go under the sampling and over here you can see we have these two type of samplings first is the viewport rendering and the second one is the final output which is this render one so we're going to just focus on this one so over here we have the max samples and this is set to 4096 this number is very high because this will increase the rendering time a lot but it will definitely give you a very clear image so we can fix this by lowering this down to something like 256 so now the number of samples have decreased this will lower down our render time but this will also increase the noise in our final output so we can get rid of that noise using the denoise option so make sure that this is turned on and in case you are not able to get this denoise option then that means you are using the older version of blenders and you can still use the denoise option in them so for that you have to enable it separately under the properties from here you can see we have the denoising data so you have to enable this after that you can go under the compositing and make sure the use node is check and you can see that we have the denoising data over here now we can add a node by pressing shift a and let's search for denoise and after that you can plug the noisy image under the image denoising normal to the normal and denoising albedo under the albedo after that just take this output and let's plug this to the image so this will work exactly like this so we already have this option over here so i'm not going to do this so we can just get rid of this and let's just connect the image to the output image and if you go under the output properties you can see we have the resolution now the higher the resolution is slower the render time will be but it will definitely have high quality but there is a very nice technique using which you can take the resolution to a very lower value and after that you can upscale them without losing much quality so for this example i'm going to just render this into 1080 by 1080 so once you're done with this let's change the frame range so start frame we are going to set this to 1 and end frame we are going to set this to 60 because our animation is 60 frames long after that you can go under the output and you can select wherever you want to save this by simply selecting the folder and once you're happy with this let's change this to 16 bit color depth and compression we don't need so these are the settings that you have to do after that you can just go to render and click on render animation and it will start rendering each frame and it will save a sequence of total 60 frames so after rendering you will get total 60 frames which will look something like this and you can combine them in any software you want like after effects or even in blender to get a video file but now the most important thing is that the resolution of this is not very high so you can see that this is very blurry and of low resolution so we can fix that by simply using a software called upscale so this is a free software which uses ai to upscale your images and turn them from low resolution to really high i will put a link in the description from where you can download this and after that you can install it in your system and once you're done with this let's see how this works 
So we have the software over here. All you have to do is just simply drag your image, whatever you want to upscale, just drag it. And after that, you can select different type of upscaling models. So I'm going to just select the top one. And after that, just click on upscale. So now you can see that it will start processing. And once it is finished, you will get a very high output, which is typically 4K. So once it is done, you can check the quality. So I'm not sure if you are able to see the comparison, but it is huge. You can see that this one is much clearer and has high resolution. And this one is very noisy over here. So I will put a side by side comparison of this on your screen and you can check this out on your own. And you can also upscale all these images at once by using the batch upscale. So just turn this option on and after that you can just select whatever folder you want to upscale and just select the output folder. Just click on upscale and after that it will go one by one through all these images and it will give you a 4K version of all of them which you can combine to create a video something like this. So this is how you can create class dispersion effect in Blender. And the project file for this tutorial is available on Patreon. So if you're supporting me over there, then you can download it from there. And if you are not, then you might consider it because you will get access to the tutorial project files and exclusive templates that are available only on Patreon. So with that being said, my name is Abhishek and I'll see you in the next one.